Hello and welcome to the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. And this week we'll be talking about vulvodynia and vestibulodynia. And we're going to explain these two uh, uh, syndromes and what they are. Well, uh, vulvodynia and uh, vestibulodynia are, is, is, well, vulvodynia is pain around the vulva that does not resolve. And there's uh, no abnormality and no uh, obvious cause for the pain. Uh, vestibulodynia is a term used for when the pain is at the entrance uh, of the vagina in an area known as the vestibule. And that's the area just below the clitoris uh, for where the uh, urethra is and just on the top of the vagina. So it's that little small uh, area there. Uh, um, and when any kind of touch or friction uh, is applied, um, it is uh, painful. Uh, I'm not going to use uh, vestibulodynia as a term anymore. I'm just going to stick to vulvodynia because a lot of the time vestibulodynia is just sometimes just referred to as localized vulvodynia. So what is vulvodynia? So many, con uh, many conditions uh, affecting uh, the vulva uh, can be painful and infections, uh, for example, uh, thrush, uh, herpes, um, eczema, um, uh, dermatitis, etc., uh, can all cause um, irritation of the skin. And in vulvodynia, pain is felt uh, in the vulva uh, when there is no obvious uh, cause. Um, and so uh, all other diagnoses have been ruled out by examination and by uh, investigation and uh, the patient uh, is left with this uh, uh, pain around the particular uh, around a particular area of the vagina it doesn't have to be around uh, the whole um, entrance of the vagina or it doesn't have to be around the whole vulva area it could be a very small point and usually uh, in my experience it's usually in the bottom two thirds uh, of the um, uh, entrance of the vagina, uh, or sometimes it can be localized uh, to the top third um, as, as, as a general rule, but obviously you can have different uh, uh, areas that are affected around the vulva uh, region. So the types of uh, vulvodynia, well, it can either be uh, generalized or localized, and it can be described as provoked, uh, which occurs uh, by touch, or spontaneous with that in uh, with any uh, obvious trigger. Uh, it can also be classified as primary or secondary. So primary is no known cause and secondary, uh, which is following condition, uh, usually after inflammation of the vulva, such as, for example, thrush. And um, many of the cases I've seen of vulvodynia is after uh, quite a severe case of thrush. Thrush, I've done a video on thrush, uh, and thrush is obviously uh, very, very common uh, in women at all, and thrush is not a sexually transmitted infection, just in case you're wondering. So the precise cause of vulvodynia is unknown. Uh, it's, uh, the, no the nerve endings um, uh, of the skin of the vulva appear to become uh, oversensitized and send abnormal signals uh, to the brain, uh, and so they overinterpret a normal touch sensation as a pain sensation. There are things that can make it worse, for example, if someone is very uh, stressed about a particular thing, um, and also uh, uh, it, it's extremely common as well. Uh, around about 15 out of uh, every 100 women are thought to have some form of uh, vulvodynia as well. And it's, it's not contagious, it's not related to hygiene or hygiene products. Uh, vulvodynia is, uh, is classed as a, a complex regional uh, pain syndrome. Uh, so that's just a, a medical jazzy term uh, by basically saying uh, migraine is also another form of complex regional pain syndrome or fibromyalgia. Uh, and so it's just a pain syndrome which is not really fully understood. Um, we'll be honest about this, migraine isn't fully understood either um, or fibromyalgia, uh, but it's just a, a complex regional pain syndrome affecting uh, a particular area and vulvodynia affects uh, the vulva. So, um, just to have a quick recap, vulvodynia is an overinterpretation of uh, the normal uh, uh, contact signals, could it be touch or friction, and that's translated into pain signals. Um, uh, it is uh, a serious problem, um, uh, but there's nothing uh, uh, wrong. Um, it can be uh, resolved, and there's nothing physically wrong at all. Under examination, you're completely 100% 100, 100 uh, normal. It's just, uh, as I said, an overinterpretation. You are perfectly normal. It is very important to remember that. And 
vulvodynia can't be caught, it's not infectious, it's not contagious, and it's not hereditary either, so it's not passed on from um, uh, mother to daughter. So what are the symptoms of it? Well, the pain occurs um, in the vulva area. Uh, occasionally, it can be uh, a little bit more sp uh, widespread and involves uh, the top of the thighs or the inner thighs um, and uh, the buttocks as well. It can be felt as um, an ache, sometimes a burning, stinging, um, as like a, so a, a soreness is how, how it's often described uh, to me. And it can either be constant or it can be intermittent. Uh, symptoms uh, only occur in a, a small area um, or they can involve uh, the entire vulva and uh, as I said previously uh, I've only seen about a couple of cases where it contains the whole uh, vulva um, uh, and usually it's uh, uh, fairly defined and usually around about the bottom two-thirds of, of, of around uh, the vulva to the entrance to the uh, uh, vagina and the pain can uh, as I said uh, occur spontaneously uh, or when the vulva is touched and ongoing pain can be caused uh, by it can cause significant distress and anxiety and it can affect uh, sexual uh, relationships and uh, a lot of these things it's um, it can be made worse if, if the partner is uh, very agitated that he's not necessarily getting uh, the sexual contact he wants this can cause even more stress and anxiety um, on the woman in question uh, and also uh, if for example an individual is either in a, an abusive relationship or is uh, getting a lot of stress at work or there's just too much hecticness going on in the life this can also cause uh, pain around uh, the vulva area so what does vulvodynia look like well the vagina is completely normal so there's no pictures there's nothing to see it's completely and utterly uh normal okay um and so it's got nothing to do with um oh uh, so a lot of people come with vulvodynia thinking they can see uh, a bit of a spot or thinking they can see uh, something and to be honest with you when i examine them it, there's nothing to see it's completely and utterly uh, normal uh, obviously, if you do have uh, infections or symptoms, then this is obviously needs to be uh, ruled out. So how is it diagnosed? Well, uh, diagnose, uh, diagnosis is actually done through a very, very careful history and looking at the factors which may be causing it. Um, uh, generally, any uh, nurse or doctor who will be uh, uh, treated, who's experienced in treating the condition uh, will obviously do um, uh, an examination and the examination should be obviously done on your terms um, and only conducted uh, when you are ready for the examination uh, to um, uh, for the examination to commence um, and the examination should be done so uh, uh, the woman uh, patient is uh, empowered and so she can halt the examination or even direct parts of the examination according to um, um, her wishes and obviously it can be stopped at any time uh, in order to prevent uh, uh, any further uh, distress or, or trauma um now uh during the examination um there is a general inspection looking at the lower abdomen looking at uh, the lymph uh, or palpating for the lymph nodes in the ingual area which is in the groin uh, examining the outside of the vulva and the vagina and that is just having a general quick uh, look uh, at the vagina uh, itself uh, there may be a speculum examination to look at the cervix just to uh, take a few swabs uh, and slides just to rule out uh, other causes. Uh, there may also be what's called um, a point uh, touch examination where you take either a cotton bud or what's called um, a loop which is a small plastic uh, round thing it doesn't hurt there's no sharp bits on it and you just gently touch uh, the outside of the uh, vagina just to make sure or just to find out where the area is <coughs> where it's uh, tender or painful. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and uh, uh, afterwards uh, there may also be an internal examination uh, may also be uh, conducted or uh, performed. So what is a treatment? While I said it wasn't a hygiene issue, what would be general good advice though is you want to avoid um, bubbles uh, when you wash. Um, so avoid uh, soaps because soaps contain surfactants. I've also done a video on gentle hygiene, so feel free to watch that. Uh, avoid shower gels, bubble baths, and bath bombs, or whatever they're called nowadays, uh, special wipes and deodorants in that area. Okay, if you want to uh, wash with something, just use water. Uh, however, you 
you can use a soap substitute if you want to. Uh, there's a few uh, soap substitutes um, which I tend to recommend. One is Dermal 200, but it's very important. Dermal 200 contains chlorhexidine um, and sometimes can actually cause a rash. So it's very, very important. If you ever do use Dermal 200, you, it must be washed off afterwards and you must never use it again if you get any kind of uh, side effects. The vast majority of people are absolutely fine with Dermal. I use Dermal uh, as, as a wash and it's absolutely fine. Uh, other people tend to uh, also use E45 shower. Uh, I Personally, not that keen on the feel of it, um, but it's a very, very popular wash. And anything that people with eczema um, or has very, very sensitive skin use. But ideally, it, there should be no bubbles in there. Uh, some people use Hydromol. Uh, that's a very, very waxy uh, substance. And so you pick up some of the wax. Uh, when the shower's running, quickly put it under the water and it will turn white. And you can use that as a, uh, as a wash. Um, uh, what some people do as well is if they do go into uh, swimming pools quite a lot, uh, they can uh, use um, petroleum jelly just to protect that particular area. Uh, some people do use local anaesthetic ointment to numb the area uh, to reduce any discomfort um, and this can be sometimes purchased without a, a doctor but it can, can uh, sting a little bit if you use it um, and uh, you can get a little bit of allergic reaction if you use it over a very long period of time. Um, however, you know, um, uh, if you do uh, apply it um, uh, and you're about to have sex, uh, try and wipe as much as you can because uh, lidocaine uh, gel is not necessarily great uh, with uh, condoms. Okay, it's not a, a lubricant and certainly don't use a lidocaine gel as a, uh, as, a, as a sex lube, otherwise your partner won't thank you for it when his uh, penis goes completely uh, numb. <laughs> Um, and uh, ideally I would always suggest to try and use it um, uh, sparingly because you don't want it to become a hook that you can only uh, have sex or you can only walk around uh, with uh, lidocaine gel. Uh, however, if lidocaine gel is uh, effective, then you may want to consider um, a further treatment for it. So amitriptyline, uh, so there's a few drugs here, amitriptyline, norotriptyline, gabapentin, or pregabalin. Uh, and so all these drugs are for other reasons, uh, for, um, either, so the gabapentins are uh, anti-epileptic, anti amitriptylines are antidepressants effectively, but they're very good at controlling um, uh, certain pain syndromes and problems. And so what I usually do is I say, say to people, um, take amitriptyline, 10 milligrams uh, at night, um, just one tablet once a day. It will take about three to four weeks for that tablet to actually kick in. If there is no difference whatsoever, you increase it to 20 milligrams and then wait for two weeks. If there's no difference, increase by 10 milligrams up to 30. Uh, and keep on going uh, and after every two weeks you increase it by 10 milligrams to a maximum of 100 milligrams. Um, now if 100 milligrams is not helping whatsoever uh, then uh, th there needs to be a, a rethink of the treatment or a change of treatment to uh, gabapentin so bring the patient down um, in a stepwise fashion and then uh, put them on gabapentin. <clears throat> If amitriptyline uh, does work, and I had one patient just had to increase it to around about 40 milligrams, it worked very, very well. And then they stay on um, whatever uh, dosage is effective. They stay on it for about um, three uh, to four, sometimes up to six months, and then gradually wean themselves off every three weeks, reduce the dose, and eventually they come off it. And that helps just to train uh, the muscle um, to, uh, sorry, not train the muscle, train the brain to realize that these are normal touch sensations, they're not pain sensations. There's also pelvic floor exercises you can do. Um, Caspersilin cream is something I've never used before, but apparently some people um, use it. And there's also um, uh, intralesional injections. Again, I've never used that as well. Uh, so I, I tend to treat my patients with uh, amitriptyline and uh, lidocaine gel uh, PRN. Uh, after doing extensive investigations to rule out other causes.
Okay. Um, other helpful tips: uh, look at stresses, try and de-stress your life as uh, possible, uh, as much as possible. Avoid tight clothing in the genital area. Very, very important. Um, so uh, wear uh, cotton undies, not dyed, not synthetics. Uh, people wear these skin-tight legging stuff for gym. Uh, try not to wear such tight uh, clothing um, uh, all the time. Wear something a bit looser. Allow the vagina and the vulva uh, to breathe, which is uh, very, very important. Um, if, in, if intercourse is uh, painful and um, uh, is having quite a lot of, uh, psycho, a lot of psychological effects on your sexual relationships, then it may be important, uh, obviously, uh, communicate fully with your partner. So you need to have a, a good community of, a relationship with your other half. Um, and also, uh, you may need to also consider psychosexual counselling if, if it has uh, caused uh, the breakups of uh, relationships, because this may prevent you from reforming uh, or making uh, different relationships as well. Um, it may be if it's a very, very extreme case, uh, you may need to be, so if the 100 milligrams of amitriptyline and you've gone all the way up to 100 and it's still made no effect at all, then you may need to go to a pain management uh, clinic. Most women uh, usually find some kind of combined approach using several approaches, the most effective way in managing a vulvodynia. There's not one set way, it's uh, whatever works best for you is what I uh, would advise. And it's fine to try one for a few months if it's not working, add in another or use a few different approaches at the same time. Okay. Um, so um, in terms of uh, the prognosis of vulvodynia, uh, it's I've got a very, very good prognosis, uh, but it does take uh, time. Everyone wants it to go away within a few days, but unfortunately, uh, vulvodynia usually has been there for quite a few months in the first place, if not years. And so it's not going to go away in days. And hopefully the... Um, the symptoms of vulvodynia uh, subside as the um, um, as as months go on, so it does unfortunately take a little bit of time. And obviously, a supportive partner uh, is very very uh, helpful, as an unsupported partner can actually, because of the added stress, uh, can make uh, vulvodynia worse. So it's very important to get your partner on board where you can. So remember, uh, wash, collect, uh, wash uh, correctly, no soaps, nothing with bubbles. Uh, if you're sexually active, get a sexual health screen and please see a doctor. Uh, so in the UK and some other countries around the world, genital urinary medicine is a specialty and that's my specialty as, a, uh, uh, as an otherwise known as a sexual health doctor and HIV doctor. Um, uh, in other countries, there's no such thing as sexual health or genital urinary medicine, in which case then you may want to see for vulvodynia a genital dermatologist okay uh, and that is uh, a subspecialty of general dermatology so it's very important if you're going to see a dermatologist uh, they are used uh, to uh, genital dermatoses as well uh, here are some of the great websites I've used um, and uh, I recommend them all basically they're all uh, very very good and these have all helped uh, me um, put this particular episode uh, together so uh, thank you very much uh, please like and subscribe as it helps support this channel uh, and share if you if you like it and you think other people uh, could use this information thank you uh, take care goodbye and have good sexual health bye bye